Hi guys, this is Nate with Reach 3D Printers. Today we're doing a tutorial, a quick setup of a print. So without further ado, we're going to make this fast. Um, we're going to start by opening up web browser. We're going to type in Thingiverse. It's a great website with lots of files that you can print. And when we get to Thingiverse, um, I'm already looking for a rocket ship named G-Create, so I'm going to do a little search. Pulled up the program. It's to the top left. I have no mouse, so I'll just got a little icon. Go ahead and download it. You'll notice it downloads. It's a zip file, so hopefully you have WinRAR or WinZip to unzip these. Um, we're going to be looking for an STL file, so go ahead and open the zip folder and extract it to the desktop and or wherever you can find it easily. Hit OK. Since I already have the file downloaded, I'm just going to repeat it, so it's going to copy over it. Close WinZip. Open your file. You'll notice four STLs or certificate trust list. Um, those are what your computer reads is an STL extension. Open Repetier Host. And Repetier Host is the main control software for creating the G code. It takes the STL and converts it to usable G code by the printer. Um, first thing you're going to do is see that little plus symbol. Go ahead and click that. This will allow you to add it. Find your rocket ship STL on the desktop. Um, open the large, this is the main file. Go ahead and open it. It's going to load. Some files are large and they take a little bit of time to load. About 10 to 12 megabytes is what I would recommend being a max file size for an average computer like I'm using. Um, 2 gigahertz, 2 gig RAM. Um, any larger, really intricate STLs or models take a long time to slice and open. So we're just opening the STL file right now. It's loading into Repetier Host. Any second now. <laughs> and notice we have not connected the printer. At the very top left of the screen, it is red. You can connect the printer and do this, but you don't necessarily have to at the moment. Um, I plan on showing how to do an SD card and how to um, print from the computer. So, grab the file. You can move the file around. Um, the left mouse button selects it. The scroll button zooms. Um, I'm scaling it, if you notice up top, because it's huge. So we're going to reduce the size down to 33 percent. There's 33. Hit enter. And the lock on the side is for dimensions. You can also rotate the model up top there or mirror it. So I'm just kind of taking a look at this thing. And then you will go into the slice tab up top. Um, that little indicator is my arrow saying that's the slice. Um, at which point you can check out the print config. There should be some preloaded presets, um, adhesion, there's a few different types, but I don't use them. Quality is the thickness of layers, support type is if it needs support or not. Um, filament settings are going to be based on temperature that your nozzle is and your bed is. 205 is pretty good for PLA, 245 or so would be ABS, nylon can be up to 265. This is the average speed of the printer. Um, I just put it at 50, so I got some room. And density of infill, 10%. Now you're going to hit the Slice with Cura button. When you click that, it is going to slice it into G-code. Uh, this can take some time. There's a scroll bar. Um, you have to go up a little bit to see the progress. Um, a large file can take four or five minutes if it's really big. So if you keep it under 10 megabytes, usually it takes less than a minute. Make sure you're using the Cura engine. I like it better than 
the slicer. This is your print preview. It pops up automatically after it's done slicing. There's an edit G code and a save for SD print. In the save for SD print, make sure to have both the top sections checked marked, but not the binary format check marked, then hit save. Um, save it in a location such as the desktop. Name it and save it. That is all there is. That is now a G code file prepared to be loaded onto an SD card. And that file is then where you put it, desktop. So you can, well, we won't load it onto that yet. Go ahead and open up Repetier again. In here, we are going to look into uh, connecting. Now, my computer isn't connected with a USB cable at this very second, so I'm connecting it right now and when you plug it in you should have a notification like a little boom. then click connect sometimes it's not in the right com or the settings aren't right you can open those printer settings and change your com port it's very important that your baud rate is at 2500 but choose the com port that shows up make sure that baud rate is correct and click apply you have to click apply and then click OK Notice this is a 52 minute print. It gives you a little estimation there, what it will take based on the 50 millimeters per second in the layer heights. Try to connect again now that we got the COM port switched. If you're printing from USB, this is how you do it. Um, then you can just hit start print. When you click start print, um, notice the manual control tab that will automatically open up and it will start heating up and going through its motions. But in the manual control, when you're not printing, you can use what I'm showing you as the X and Y table movement. Um, also, here's the Z. You have the locations at the top in red. That X house is to home. That's Y homing. That's Z homing. And the blank one is for homing all. One other thing you should note is the stepper. Turn off steppers here. Uh, when you engage the stepper motors by moving an axis, then it will keep them locked. So you have to turn it off if you want to manually push something. The extruder on the far right um, will only extrude if you're at temperature on the nozzle. Feed rate, um, flow rate, that's a bed temp. Um, aim, the actual black diamonds that I'm hitting now are to show the actual temperature. But the double diamonds further right are your target temperatures. Um, but yeah, you would just click start print and it would automatically home and, and uh, begin the print. Um, if you are doing the SD card route and you want to print from the screen so you're not using up your computer, then you would simply, well, i got to get my SD card out and plug it into the computer. And when you plug it into the computer should open up an autoplay just get rid of that um, and hit send to EOS digital little card that showed up it'll copy it over there eject the card first of course so you don't corrupt the data file that's it